Sharks have a fearsome reputation for shredding fleshes, even that of human beings. Although attacks like this are rare, they are gory whenever humans encounter sharks in their natural habitat. Scientists do offer solace that these attacks are mistakes because sharks weren't able to distinguish surfers or swimmers from their natural prey. But is that the case? This video will narrate that better. The golden rays of the morning sun danced upon the azure waves of Lighthouse Beach, casting a mesmerizing glow upon the crystalline waters. For Jack, a seasoned surfer whose very essence seemed intertwined with the rhythm of the ocean, this was paradise. With each stroke of his arm, his board sliced through the water with practiced precision, a testament to years spent mastering the art of wave riding. As Jack paddled out, his senses heightened, attuned to the subtle shifts in the ocean's mood. Though the waves beckoned with their siren call, there was an underlying awareness, a primal instinct that whispered of the dangers lurking beneath the surface. Lighthouse Beach was renowned not only for its breathtaking beauty and epic waves, but also for the ever-present threat of sharks that prowled its depths, a fact often overlooked amidst the allure of its pristine shores. Yet for Jack and his fellow surfers, the allure of the waves eclipsed any shadow of fear. With each crest and trough, they danced upon the water's surface, defying gravity and embracing the raw power of the sea. And so, on this sun-kissed morning, Jack found himself immersed in the timeless ritual of wave riding, his heart pounding in sync with the rhythm of the ocean. As he positioned himself to catch a perfect wave, anticipation coursed through his veins. The world around him seemed to fade away replaced by the singular focus of the moment, the exhilarating rush of riding nature's fury. With a swift motion, he propelled himself forward, his body becoming one with the wave as it carried him effortlessly toward the shore. For a fleeting moment, Jack felt invincible, his spirit soaring amidst the foam and spray. But then, as if summoned by some unseen force, a sense of unease crept into his consciousness. It was subtle at first, a nagging feeling that something was amiss, a whisper of danger amidst the euphoria of the moment. And then, with a suddenness that seemed to defy comprehension, the tranquility of the morning was shattered. From the depths below, a dark shadow emerged, its form obscured by the churning waters. Jack's world was upended. Jack's blink of an eye as he found himself face to face with the very embodiment of his deepest fears, a shark. Time seemed to slow to a crawl as Jack grappled with the reality of the situation. Instinct and adrenaline surged through his veins, propelling him into action even as panic threatened to consume him. With a desperate hunger, he fought against the primal urge to flee, knowing that any sudden movement could spell disaster. Before Jack could react, the beast lunged with savage intent, its jaws closing around him with bone-crushing force. In an instant, paradise gave way to agony as the shark's teeth tore through his surfboard to his flesh leaving him helpless in the grip of the ocean's apex predator. The shock of the attack reverberated through Jack's body, each excruciating moment etched into his consciousness with searing clarity. He screamed in anguish, the sound lost amidst the roar of the waves and the churning of the water turned crimson by his blood. Yet even amid unimaginable pain, Jack refused to surrender to despair. With a courage born of desperation, he fought against the relentless onslaught, grappling with the beast in a primal struggle for survival. Meanwhile, the once serene waters erupted into chaos as more sharks converged on the scene, drawn by the scent of blood and the promise of an easy meal. The air filled with the tang of fear and adrenaline as Jack's fellow surfers paddled frantically away from the unfolding horror, their hearts pounding with terror and determination. But amidst the chaos, a glimmer of hope emerged, a lifeline in the form of vigilant lifeguards alerted to the unfolding tragedy by the frantic shouts of the surfers. With swift precision, they sprang into action, their training guiding their movements as they raced to save one of their own. As they reached Jack, the full extent of the horror became apparent. His leg mangled beyond recognition, his pale form trembling with shock and pain. He clung to consciousness with grim determination, even as the jaws of death loomed ever closer. He refused to yield. With steely resolve, the lifeguards intervened swiftly and decisively as they fought to pry Jack from the predator's jaws. With a final burst of effort, they succeeded, hoisting him onto a rescue board and swiftly sending the shark back into the depths from whence it came.
Back on the shore, a crowd had gathered, their faces etched with worry and disbelief as they witnessed the harrowing drama unfolding before them. Among them stood Jack's friends and associates, their hearts heavy with fear and uncertainty as they awaited his fate. Jack's condition was dire, his life hanging in the balance as he was airlifted to a specialist hospital for urgent treatment. The loss of blood had left him teetering on the brink of death, his body weakened by the relentless assault of the shark's jaws. Upon examination, the extent of the damage became painfully clear. His left leg was so mangled that amputation was deemed necessary to prevent further complications. As Jack underwent surgery to remove the shattered remnants of his limb, the beach where the attack had occurred remained closed to the public. Authorities launched a thorough investigation into the incident, determined to uncover the circumstances that had led to such a devastating encounter. Photographs from the scene painted a haunting picture of the aftermath. Jack's blue and white surfboard, its bottom ripped off, bearing the unmistakable imprint of the shark's lethal embrace. Based on the size of the bite marks, experts estimated the predator to be between 3.8 to 4.2 meters in length, a formidable creature capable of inflicting catastrophic harm. For Jack, the road to recovery would be long and arduous marked by countless hours of rehabilitation and adjustment to life with a prosthetic limb. Several weeks later, Jack emerged from the shadow of tragedy, his spirit unbroken despite the physical toll of the encounter. With a prosthetic attached to his remaining leg, he took his first tentative steps towards a new beginning, determined to reclaim the life that had been momentarily snatched away. The Hardy Family a quintet of adventurers seeking respite from the relentless pace of 21 st century life found solace in the azure waters of the Maldives. Amidst the chaos of the modern world, they carved out moments of tranquility, escaping to the pristine shores of Uligan, a secluded island paradise nestled within the Maldives archipelago. With eager anticipation, the family embarked on their journey leaving behind the hustle and bustle of everyday life for the serenity of the open sea. A short motor trip to the harbor, followed by a leisurely sail aboard their rented yacht, brought them to their destination. A secluded haven surrounded by crystal-clear waters and vibrant coral reefs teeming with life. A panorama of breathtaking beauty greeted the Hardy family as they anchored in the shallow waters, only three meters deep. The azure blue waters stretched before them, merging seamlessly with the endless ocean of sky above. It was a sight to behold, a reminder of the awe-inspiring power of nature and the simple joys that awaited those who dared to seek them. For Hughes and Lara Hardy and their three children, Gary, Hart, and Will, this was more than just a vacation. It was a chance to reconnect as a family and forge memories that would last a lifetime. As they stood on the deck of their yacht, Basking in the warm embrace of the tropical sun, they couldn't help but feel a profound sense of gratitude for the opportunity to escape the hustle and bustle of their lives back home in America. But they were not alone in their quest for tranquility. As the day wore on, more yachts arrived, their sleek silhouettes dotting the horizon like sentinels of serenity. Yet despite the influx of visitors, the seafaring travelers had an air of camaraderie a shared understanding of the importance of slowing down and savoring simple pleasures. The family's arrival at the port of Uligan in the Maldives was met with efficiency and warmth as officials promptly cleared them for entry. Amar, their friendly agent, facilitated the process quickly, providing them with SIM cards and ensuring their passports were stamped and validated. With the formalities swiftly concluded, the Hardy family was officially welcomed into the idyllic paradise of the Maldives. While Hughes and Lara attended to the necessary registrations, their children, Gary, Will, and Hart, eagerly anticipated their first foray into the crystal-clear waters surrounding them. As the sun began to dip below the horizon, casting a golden glow across the tranquil bay, the family gathered around the table in the cabin of their yacht for a simple yet satisfying dinner of freshly baked bread a taste of home in a far-flung corner of the world. The following day, they dawned bright and clear, offering endless possibilities for exploration and adventure. Determined to connect with their fellow travelers, the Hardy family ventured out from the confines of their yacht, eager to forge new friendships and share in the camaraderie of the maritime community. Hughes's children were drawn to their counterparts on neighboring yachts, 
as they mingled with fellow sailors, exchanging stories and laughter beneath swaying palm trees. Gary, Will, and Hart quickly formed friendships with their newfound companions, bonding over shared experiences and a mutual love of adventure. As night fell and the sky was painted with a tapestry of twinkling stars, Hart suggested a nighttime swim, an invitation eagerly accepted by his siblings. With their permission granted, the trio donned their swimsuits and plunged into the cool embrace of the sea, laughter bubbling up as they frolicked in the moonlit waters. Meanwhile, Hughes and Lara engaged in a spirited debate about the wisdom of allowing their children to venture into the water after dark. Lara, ever the protective mother, voiced her concerns about the dangers lurking beneath the surface. At the same time, Hughes argued that the children deserve the chance to enjoy themselves and cool off in the heat of the night. In the end, Lara relented, but not without trepidation. Making her way to the beam light, she cast its beam across the water, illuminating where her children played. She watched with pride and apprehension in the soft glow of the light as Gary, Will, and Hart continued to splash and play, their laughter mingling with the gentle rhythm of the waves. As the trio frolicked in the water, their laughter mingling with the gentle lapping of the waves, they were oblivious to the danger lurking beneath the surface. Unbeknownst to them, the sound of their splashing had drawn the attention of a pack of hungry sharks, their predatory instincts honed to deadly precision. Will, the youngest of the three, first spotted the shadowy shapes gliding beneath them. His heart pounded in his chest as he realized their peril, his voice ringing out in a frantic cry of warning that echoed across the bay. Sharks! he screamed, words slicing through the air like a knife. Panic seized them as they scrambled to reach the yacht's safety, their limbs churning through the water urgently. But their efforts were in vain as one of the sharks closed in, its razor-sharp teeth sinking into Will's flesh with savage force, as if to scold him for letting them off. The trio rallied together in sheer terror, fighting tooth and nail to fend off the relentless predator. With adrenaline coursing through their veins, they lashed out with whatever means they had, driving the shark back with a ferocity born of survival instinct. But their ordeal was far from over. As they turned to swim back to the yacht's safety, their hopes were dashed when they discovered the ladder leading back on board had been broken, a mechanical fault overlooked in their haste to set sail. Fear threatened to consume them as they realized they were stranded in the water, vulnerable to the circling sharks that closed in with each passing moment. Hughes, their father, sprang into action, his instincts as a protector kicking into overdrive. With a strength born of desperation, he reached out a steady hand to his injured son, hauling him aboard the yacht with the help of his other children. Will's anguished cries filled the air as they tended to his wounds, applying a makeshift tourniquet to stem the flow of blood. Hart and Gary were also helped onto the yacht before the sharks could catch up. Will was taken to the hospital that night. After the harrowing incident, Lara solemnly vowed to prioritize her children's safety. With Will's receiving medical attention, the family's holiday was continued, albeit under a shadow of caution. Lara's once carefree demeanor was replaced by vigilant watchfulness, especially regarding water activities. No longer were her children allowed to venture into the water, especially at night, when dangers could lurk unseen. Amidst the azure depths of the remote islands off the Pacific coast, a team of scientists, including Dan Allen, embarked on a marine mission that would forever alter the course of their research. Their expedition to the rugged beauty of the archipelago was marked by a sense of anticipation, a quest to uncover the mysteries hidden beneath the waves. Their journey took them to the uncharted waters surrounding San Benedicto Island, where Dan stumbled upon a small red fish, an enigmatic creature whose identity remained mysterious. Little did they know that this discovery would pale in comparison to what lay ahead. As the team ventured deeper into the azure depths, they stumbled upon an uncharted underwater cave system, a labyrinth of twisting passages and hidden chambers that beckoned with the promise of untold wonders. Yet what set this cave system apart was not just its sheer size, but the rare species of aggressive sharks that patrolled its murky depths. The discovery was both exhilarating and daunting for the researchers, offering a unique opportunity to study these elusive creatures in their natural habitat. 
But as they delved deeper into the caves, their sense of wonder soon turned to dread when disaster struck in the form of a powerful earthquake. The ground trembled beneath their feet, sending shockwaves rippling through the water as the cave system collided around them. Panic gripped the team as they realized they were trapped, cut off from the outside world with no way to escape. Amidst the chaos, Dan spotted the redfish she had caught with a little net. They knew their only hope was to find a way out before it was too late. But with the walls closing in and the scent of blood from their injured companions drawing the sharks ever closer, the odds were stacked against them like never before. As they plunged deeper into the labyrinth's heart, they encountered one obstacle after another. A maze of narrow passageways filled with jagged rocks, dead ends that led to nowhere, and the ever-present threat of the sharks lurking in the shadows. Yet amidst the darkness and uncertainty, Dan clung tightly to the net that housed his precious catch. A small glimmer of hope amidst the chaos. But when it seemed like all hope was lost, they stumbled upon a hidden passage leading to the surface, a narrow shaft of light cutting through the darkness like a beacon of hope. With renewed determination, they pressed forward, their hearts pounding with adrenaline as they navigated the final stretch of their harrowing journey. Their triumph, however, was short-lived as they emerged from the depths, only to find themselves far from the safety of their vessel. Injured by rock particles that had fallen during the earthquake, they knew their journey was far from over. With grim determination, they set out to make the arduous journey back to the ship, each step a testament to their unwavering resolve to survive against all odds. After what felt like an eternity, they finally reached the safety of their vessel, their bodies battered and bruised, but their spirits unbroken. As they collapsed onto the deck, exhaustion washing over them like a tidal wave, the team leader realized the true identity of Dan's catch. A wrasse, a common species of tropical fish found in the waters surrounding the islands. Though their ordeal had been harrowing and fraught with danger, they had not suffered in vain. Their discovery, though not the elusive species they had hoped for, reminded them of the unpredictable nature of scientific exploration and the importance of perseverance in the face of adversity. As they nursed their wounds and reflected on their narrow escape, they knew their experience would forever shape their understanding of the ocean's depths and the creatures that called it home. Though they faced death and danger at every turn, they emerged more robust and resilient from the darkness than ever. On that balmy 80-degree morning, the pebbly beach east of South Africa was abuzz with anticipation as world-class swimmers from across the globe gathered for the prestigious international swimming competition. With their sleek speedos and brightly colored swim caps, they stood poised on the shore, their eyes fixed on the azure expanse of the oceanic arena before them. This competition was no ordinary event. It was renowned for its challenging location. Nestled within the treacherous waters of Shark Alley, a notorious stretch of sea teeming with formidable predators, particularly the fearsome bull sharks that lurked beneath the surface with predatory intent. Among the competitors stood Mick Favre, a seasoned veteran of the sport who had been crowned champion on two separate occasions. With a steely resolve born of countless hours of training and preparation, Favre exuded confidence as he awaited the start of the four-day competition. His muscles rippled beneath his bronzed skin, a testament to the countless laps he had swum in preparation for this moment. Mick Favre stood tall and resolute on the starting block, his gaze fixed on the shimmering expanse of the pool before him. As one of the leading swimmers of his generation, Favre's name was synonymous with greatness, a testament to his unrivaled skill and unwavering determination in the face of adversity. But as he prepared to dive into the water, a shadow loomed over him, a formidable opponent named Richmond Gray. Gray was an American swimmer whose prowess in the pool was legendary. With a sleek, streamlined physique and a relentless drive to succeed, Gray had dominated the world of competitive swimming for years, leaving a trail of records and accolades in his wake. His speed and agility were unmatched, his technique flawless, a true force to be reckoned with in the water. Throughout his illustrious career, Gray amassed an impressive array of titles and awards, cementing his status as one of the most excellent swimmers ever. From Olympic gold medals to world championship victories, 
Gray conquered almost every challenge that stood in his way, leaving no doubt in anyone's mind about his unparalleled talent and skill. Lise Wills, a formidable figure in competitive swimming, was the organizer of the event. With a discerning eye for talent and a strict set of criteria, Wills ensured that only the most elite swimmers were granted entry into the competition. From their 20s to their late 50s, each competitor came with an impressive resume, boasting many achievements and accolades from past competitions. As the sun climbed higher in the sky, casting a golden hue across the shimmering waters, the tension on the beach reached a fever pitch. The spectators, a diverse array of avid swimming enthusiasts and curious onlookers, lined the shore, their voices rising in excitement as the swimmers prepared to take the plunge. As the starting horn blared, signaling the beginning of the race, Favre surged forward with the explosive power of a torpedo, his muscles burning with exertion as he propelled himself through the water with fierce determination. But he knew victory would not come easy, not with Gray hot on his heels, his powerful strokes propelling him forward with relentless speed and precision. Despite his best efforts, Favre could feel Gray's presence looming behind him like a specter, driving him to push himself harder and faster than ever before. With each stroke, he fought against the relentless pull of the water, his lungs burning with the effort as he raced towards the finish line with single-minded determination. As the race unfolded, the tension in the air was palpable, the spectators holding their breath as Favre and Gray battled neck and neck for supremacy in the water. With each passing lap, the gap between them narrowed, their bodies moving in perfect harmony with the rhythm of the water as they vied for dominance in the fiercely contested race. Within minutes, they had reached Shark Alley, but Favre and Gray were undeterred, their minds fixed on reaching the finish line ahead of their competitors. However, as they pressed forward, the ocean churned beneath them, its azure depths concealing the dangers that lurked beneath the surface. And then, without warning, disaster struck. A shark fin appeared next to Favre, its presence sending a jolt of fear coursing through his veins. In a split second, his head whipped to the side in panic, and he disappeared beneath the waves. The sudden attack caught everyone off guard, sending shockwaves of panic rippling through the water as swimmers scrambled to escape the predator's grasp. But amidst the chaos, Gray remained calm and composed, his training and experience guiding him as he raced to his competitor. With a burst of speed, he closed the gap between them, his powerful strokes propelling him forward with determined resolve. As he reached Favre, he wasted no time in taking action. His hands moved with lightning speed as he grappled with the shark desperately to free his fellow swimmer from its razor-sharp teeth. Together, they fought against the relentless predator, their voices raised in urgent cries for help as they struggled to escape its grip. Meanwhile, on shore, the race organizers sprang into action their voices blaring over loudspeakers as they issued a frantic warning for the race to stop and for all swimmers to evacuate the water immediately. Moments later, three rescue boats, including jet skis, rushed towards the scene, their crews armed with tranquilizer guns and ready to assist in any way they could. With a combination of skill and sheer determination, they managed to shoot tranquilizers at the shark causing it to release its grip on Favre and retreat into the depths from whence it came before the dart kicked into action. With a sigh of relief, they pulled Favre and Gray onto one of the rescue boats, their hearts pounding with adrenaline as they realized just how close they had come to disaster. As they made their way back to shore, the full extent of injuries became apparent. A deep bite wound on his left leg from the shark's teeth. Though the injury was severe, it could have been far worse without Favre's composure and quick action in the face of such a terrifying situation. The competition was swiftly canceled, and the swimming organization issued a heartfelt apology for the incident and expressed gratitude that no one had been seriously injured. Despite the disappointment of not being able to complete the race, the safety and well-being of the swimmers remained the top priority. The incident garnered widespread media coverage, with television announcers highlighting the inherent dangers of swimming in open water, particularly in areas known to be frequented by sharks. When asked about his physical and mental well-being, Favre assured reporters that he was completely fine, his resilience and determination shining through in the face of adversity. As he reflected on the events of that fateful day, 
Favre knew that he had faced one of the most significant challenges of his career and emerged stronger for it. Though the scars of the encounter would linger both physically and emotionally, he refused to let fear dictate his future in the sport he loved. And as he looked ahead to the next competition, he did so with a renewed sense of purpose and determination, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead with unwavering resolve. As the sun rose over the tranquil waters of the coastal town of Odisha in India, a sense of anticipation hung in the air. The fifth edition of the International Sand Art Festival was about to kick off, drawing skilled sand artists from across the globe to exhibit their talent in crafting intricate and breathtaking sculptures entirely out of sand. The main beach of Odisha had been transformed into a vibrant hub of creativity, with artists from various corners of the world converging to showcase their skills. Using the beach's golden sands as their canvas, these artists would create intricate designs and sculptures that conveyed meaningful messages spanning cultural heritage, social issues, and environmental conservation. As the festival commenced, the beach came alive with activity. Dozens of artists, each armed with only a bucket and a shovel, set to work meticulously molding and sculpting the sand into works of art. From towering structures depicting ancient monuments to delicate sculptures, capturing the beauty of nature, the diversity of creations on display was truly awe-inspiring. Among the participants were international representatives from countries across the Western and Eastern hemispheres, each bringing their unique perspective and artistic style to the festival. From the intricately carved patterns of Japanese Zen gardens to the bold and expressive sculptures of African wildlife, the festival celebrated global artistic talent. But amidst the festival's hustle and bustle, an ominous shadow loomed over the tranquil waters of the beach, which became evident after an unexpected incident. Despite this shadow, the festival continued in full swing, with artists working tirelessly to bring their visions to life in the soft sands of the beach. Each sculpture was a labor of love, crafted with precision and care to convey a specific message or emotion. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the bustling beachfront transformed into a scene of chaos and terror. Panicked screams echoed through the air as people scrambled for safety, their hearts pounding with fear at the thought of the unseen menace lurking just beneath the surface. It was due to shark attacks that had struck the unsuspecting crowd with ferocity, and it sent shockwaves rippling through its tight-knit community, leaving devastation in their wake. What had once been a vibrant hub of artistic creativity had now become a battleground, its azure waters stained with the blood of the innocent and the unwary. The International Sand Art Festival, which had drawn skilled artists from across the globe to showcase their talents on the sandy shores of Odisha, came to an abrupt halt as the first reports of the attacks filtered through the crowd. Hundreds of people, who had gathered to cheer on the artists as they worked and littered the water with their musical instruments, got their joyful melodies replaced by the panicked cries of those fleeing for their lives. In the midst of the chaos, Sheriff Daniel Hayes emerged as a beacon of hope in the darkness. His weathered face was a testament to the countless battles he had fought and won in service to his community. With grim determination etched into his steely gaze, Sheriff Hayes took charge of the situation, marshalling his deputies and coordinating the town's response to the crisis. Yet, even as Sheriff Hayes and his team worked tirelessly to restore order to the troubled waters, they were confronted by a new threat, a web of political intrigue and bureaucracy threatening to undermine their efforts at every turn. The town council, eager to preserve the fragile veneer of prosperity upon which Odisha depended, exerted relentless pressure on the sheriff to quell the rising fear that threatened to engulf the town. But Sheriff Hayes refused to be swayed by the machinations of the powerful few, his unwavering commitment to justice driving him forward in the face of adversity. With the support of his dedicated team of deputies, he delved deeper into the heart of darkness that lurked beneath the tranquil surface of the bay, determined to uncover the truth behind the rash of attacks and bring those responsible to justice. And then, finally, a breakthrough. Sheriff Daniel Hayes teamed up with Sarah Bennett, a marine biologist to embark on the perilous journey. Together, they combed the length and breadth of Odisha, 
their resolve unshaken by the chaos and despair that had gripped the once tranquil community. Their quest for truth led them down a twisting path fraught with danger and deception, as they sought to unravel the sinister forces conspiring to unleash chaos upon their town. From the sun-kissed beaches to the shadowy back alleys, they pursued every lead with relentless determination. As days turned into weeks, Sheriff Hayes and Sarah uncovered a shocking revelation that sent shockwaves of disbelief reverberating through the town. It appeared that the recent spate of shark attacks was not merely a random act of nature, but rather the sinister consequence of illegal fishing practices perpetrated by unscrupulous individuals seeking to profit from the bountiful riches of the sea. The evidence they uncovered painted a damning picture of greed and corruption as they pieced together the intricate web of deceit that had allowed these illegal activities to flourish unchecked. With each new revelation, their resolve grew more robust, fueled by a burning desire to bring those responsible to justice and restore peace to their troubled waters. Armed with their findings, Sheriff Hayes confronted the town council with the harsh reality of their complicity in the tragic events in the town. With a steely resolve born of righteous indignation, he demanded justice for the innocent lives that had been lost and the sacred trust that had been betrayed. In a dramatic showdown that echoed across the hallowed halls of power, Sheriff Hayes stood tall against the forces of corruption and greed that sought to undermine the very fabric of justice upon which the town stood. With the unwavering support of the townspeople who rallied behind him in a display of solidarity that echoed the spirit of unity that had sustained their community through countless trials and tribulations, he emerged victorious against all odds. The town council, faced with the irrefutable evidence of their wrongdoing, had no choice but to yield to the demands of justice. Those responsible for the illegal fishing practices were brought to account for their crimes, facing stiff penalties and sanctions for their actions. But the victory came at a cost, as the scars of the tragedy that had befallen the town would take time to heal. Yet in the aftermath of the crisis, a newfound sense of unity and purpose emerged as the people of Odisha came together to rebuild their community more robust and resilient than ever before. The incident that changed Daniel's life forever occurred five years ago, etching itself into his memory like a scar that refused to fade. Every detail was seared into his mind, from the golden rays of the sun reflecting off the tranquil waters of the ocean to the deafening roar of the great white shark as it attacked his beloved brother, Mark. Daniel and Mark had a special bond forged through years of shared experiences and cherished memories. Their weekend visits to the beach had become a cherished ritual, a time for them to escape the pressures of everyday life and reconnect with nature. Ever the adventurous spirit, Mark had always been drawn to the ocean, while Daniel had accompanied him on countless underwater excursions. Together, they would frolic in the waves, laughing and joking as they explored the underwater world beneath the surface. But on that fateful day, their idyllic outing took a tragic turn when Mark was attacked by a great white shark while spearfishing. In a heartbeat, the ferocious predator shattered the peaceful tranquility of the ocean, its razor-sharp teeth tearing through Mark's flesh with savage intent. In a desperate bid to save his brother, Daniel sprang into action drawing upon his knowledge of the ocean and its dangers to fend off the shark and drag Mark to safety. With adrenaline coursing through his veins, he fought tooth and nail to keep the predator at bay, his every instinct screaming for him to protect his brother at all costs. Finally, with a Herculean effort, Daniel managed to drag Mark up onto the rocks of the headland, where bystanders, an off-duty doctor, and a nurse rushed to his aid. For nearly an hour, they worked tirelessly to revive Mark, applying first aid and performing CPR in a desperate bid to save his life. But despite their best efforts, it was not enough. Injuries were too severe, his body ravaged by the brutal attack of the shark. As Daniel looked on helplessly, his heart breaking with every passing moment, he watched his beloved brother slip away, his life extinguished in the blink of an eye. The trauma of that day would haunt Daniel for years to come casting a dark shadow over his once vibrant spirit. The guilt of being unable to save his brother, coupled with the pain of witnessing his death firsthand, threatened to consume him whole, leaving him a shell of his former self. In the aftermath of the tragedy, 
Daniel solemnly vowed to himself that he would never set foot in the ocean again. Once a source of joy and freedom, the water now held only fear and anguish for him, its depths concealing dangers that he could not bear to face. For five long years, Daniel remained true to his promise, avoiding the ocean like the plague and burying himself in his work as a technician. But no matter how hard he tried to escape the memories of that fateful day, they continued to haunt him, lurking in the shadows of his mind like silent specters waiting to pounce. Then one day something changed. A glimmer of hope emerged from the darkness, a flicker of light that dared to pierce the veil of despair that had enveloped Daniel's soul. It came in the form of a young boy, a patient in the hospital where Daniel worked, whose eyes sparkled with wonder and curiosity as he regaled Daniel with tales of his adventures in the ocean. Inspired by the boy's bravery and resilience, Daniel was drawn back to the water, his fear and apprehension giving way to a newfound sense of determination and purpose. With each passing day, he took small steps towards overcoming his trauma, gradually rediscovering the joy and wonder that had once defined his relationship with the ocean. And so, on the fifth anniversary of his brother's death, Daniel returned to the beach where it had all begun, his heart heavy with grief yet buoyed by a newfound sense of hope. As he stood on the shore, gazing out at the vast ocean stretching before him, he felt a sense of peace wash over him, a sense of closure that he had thought would never come. At that moment, Daniel realized that while he could never erase the pain of losing his brother, he could choose to honor his memory by embracing life and all its uncertainties. As he waded into the water, feeling the cool embrace of the ocean against his skin, he knew he was finally ready to let go of the past and embrace the future ahead. As he swam, Daniel found himself drawn deeper and deeper into the embrace of the ocean, its depths calling out to him like a siren song. For a brief moment, he allowed himself to surrender to the current's pull, letting go of his pain and sorrow as he floated weightlessly in the water. But just as he began to lose himself in the soothing rhythm of the waves, a sudden movement caught his eye. A dark shadow gliding silently beneath the surface. Panic surged through him as the memories of that fateful day came rushing back with all the force of a tidal wave, threatening to engulf him once more. Instinctively, Daniel froze, his heart pounding in his chest as he watched the shadowy figure draw closer and closer. For a moment, he was paralyzed with fear, the specter of the shark looming large in his mind. As the shark's razor-sharp teeth sank into his flesh, Daniel felt a surge of adrenaline course through his veins, his every instinct screaming for him to fight back. With a primal roar, he summoned all the strength and determination within him, refusing to let the jaws of despair close around him once more. Drawing upon the memory of his brother whose spirit lived on within him, Daniel lashed out with all the fury a man possessed. With no weapon but his bare hands, he fought back against the relentless onslaught of the shark, his blows fueled by a fierce determination to survive. Each strike was a testament to his resilience, a defiant stand against the forces that sought to drag him down. With every blow, he pushed himself beyond the limits of pain and fear, refusing to surrender to the darkness that threatened to consume him. As the shark's grip tightened around him, Daniel focused all his energy on one goal, survival. With a ferocity born of desperation, he struck out at the predator with all the strength he could muster, driving his fists into its gills with relentless determination. The shark recoiled in pain, its hold on Daniel weakening with each successive blow. With one final desperate effort, Daniel delivered a crushing blow to the shark's vulnerable gills, causing it to release its grip and retreat into the depths from whence it came. Daniel emerged from the water, battered and bruised, but triumphant, gasping for breath. At that moment, he realized he had survived the ordeal and emerged more vital than ever. No longer a victim of his past, Daniel had become a symbol of hope and resilience, a testament to the power of the human spirit to overcome even the most harrowing of challenges. He had found the strength to fight back in the face of adversity, refusing to let the darkness win.